Alrighty, here we go. A video on how to make a merit level graph for this experiment, level 3 physics. Here we go. Let's bring it on. This here is a long list of everything I hope to cover in this video. You probably need to pause, read this carefully, and at other times you might need to replay the video. So the first thing here is get your data, L's and times, put your raw uncertainties, and then make some average T's. So here's our data. That's the length. That's the time for five swings. We need the uncertainties. How good is each of this? So you can do this, and you can just type in uncertainty is, let's say, five millimeters. You're going to need that in meters later. Anything of an uncertainty of one millimeter would be considered too small for this experiment. Five millimeters is probably of the upper. Now, for your time of the five swings, the uncertainty is probably 0 0.2 seconds. You could drop it down to 0 0.1 seconds, but basically this is human reaction time of the measurements on your stopwatch. You need these uncertainties to be realistic, otherwise you might fail. So it's very important you learn what realistic uncertainties are, how good each measurement is. Now we also need our average T in seconds. Remember these are for five periods each, so what we want to do is calculate this. You can do this by hand, or Excel will do it for you. Here we go. Equals. You want the average if I can spell, of these three numbers, and that needs to be divided by 5. Otherwise, you don't have the average t, you have the average 5 t's. So there it is. If you select that and right and just grab that little thing and drag it down, you've done all your averages. Congratulations. Now one of the things you might notice is all the numbers here are a little bit hinky. They have different amounts of, of decimal places. So you can select all that, right click, format cells, change the number to have two decimal places each. Makes it look a little bit better. All right. So now we're up to the average t's. We put in our uncertainties, we've done average t's. Back to that list. What's next? Ah, well this is what's next. We get to decide on what graph to make and work out the theoretical gradient. So we'll go back to that. This instruction sheet right here gives us this equation. So basically, here's what we, we come from that. This equation screams out for us to put t on the vertical and square root of l on the horizontal. It follows the format of the vertical equals all this gibberish, which includes the horizontal. If we do this graph, the theoretical gradient is going to be 2 pi on top of square root of g, and that calculates to just a bit over 2. You should do this before you get too far, before you make your graph, so that when you get to your graph, you get to your line of best fit, you can spot from a mile away if something's wrong. You should know what you're doing before you start. Know what to expect before you start. So back to here. We want the square root of L, and we want average t on the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them down here, and here's why. This is going to be my horizontal axis. That's going to be square root of L in meters square rooted, which has a power of 0.5. Now how to do this is you can say equals SQRT, open some brackets, click on the number, close the brackets, and there it is. Then you can scroll down. If you get too many, it's going to put zero, so get rid of the zero. So there they are. This, you can trim those decimal places by formatting cells. And there you go. Now you probably want three decimal places to show a little bit more detail. Excel will know the real number anyway. So there's three decimal places. On my vertical axis, I want t in, technically the average t, in seconds. So. I want them right next to each other so Excel easily graphs it. So I can say equals this number up here, and you're done, and you just drag it and drop it down. So there you go. Those are the two things we want to graph. Okay? Back to our list. Where'd my list go? Here's my list. So we've just linearized our data and found the square root of L. We didn't need to do this other one here. That'll come later, maybe. Now we need to calculate the error bars. Okay, so, error bars. What that means is how good is each of these and how good are each of these. So, your horizontal error bar 
is how good each square root of length is. Well, each square root of length is going to roll like this. You get your uncertainty, which we decided was 5 millimeters. You're going to divide by each L. Then you're going to multiply by each square root of L. And then you're going to multiply by 1 half, which is the power on a square root. Okay? So what I'll do is I'll just justify that so it's sitting over there. So this here is the formula that we're going to put in. Yet again, it's the uncertainty that we decided was on each L, divided by L, multiplied by the number you're graphing, and then multiplied by the power of the number you are graphing. So here's how you type it in. Equals 0 0.005. Divide by, click on the L. Multiply, click on the square root of L. Multiply by 0 0.5. There it is. You drag that, pull it down, we've got all of them. You can trim the decimal places if you feel you want to, it's up to you. So those are horizontal error bars. It tells us how good each of the square roots are. Now we have to work out how good each of the averages is. So now we have your vertical error bar. This is a little bit strange. Here we go. It's going to be the maximum number we use to make the average, subtract the minimum number we use to make the average, divide by two, Divide by the number of swings you had, which were five swings for us. And that is how you find the uncertainty of the average. So this will tell us how good the 2.16 is. Here's how you type it into Excel. Equals max. Whoops, actually, you probably want some brackets, so let's try this again. Equals bracket max. Then some more brackets. Drag across the three numbers that made the average. Close that. It'll find the biggest number. Subtract, minimum, bracket, drag across the same three, close that, close the other set of brackets, so it gets the subtraction, divide by two, divide by five. There it is. And you can pull this down, and it has just found how good each of those are. So that is how we do the error bars for this graph did another graph, we'd have to work out different calculations. So let's go back to this list. So we just calculated our bars. Now it's time to make some graphs and turn on some equations and turn on some error bars. So here we go. We highlight the two columns we want. We insert a scatter graph of this nature. And there it is. It looks ugly, but we'll roll with it. One thing in the merit level graph, you will need, well, no matter what, actually, you'll need to use your layout and make some axis titles, a horizontal axis title. You basically type in your square root, we can type square root of L, give it some units, it's in meters to the power of 0 0.5, and then on your vertical axis, rotated title. This is your average t, which is in seconds. And then you have your chart title, basically average t versus square root of l. You can abbreviate, we'll understand. So there you go, there's your graph. Now, what I was saying was after you get all that stuff, what we need to do is we need to trim some axes. We need to zoom in on these dots, okay? They're in a nice sort of straight line, which is always good. But the horizontal axis doesn't need to be all the way down to zero. So we could actually right-click on the axis. So you select the axis. You right-click. You format that axis. You change the top one to maybe 0 0.7. And it zoomed in on those dots, okay? you might be able to get farther. So we can actually go to 0 0.75. So you go back again, right click, change it to 0 0.75. So it's zoomed in on those. Now the vertical axis doesn't need to go below 1.5. So what we can do is we can format that axis and we can fix the bottom one to be 1.5. How's that? Let's have a look. There we go. Okay. So that's how we do this, all right? So now we've zoomed in, okay? The next stage is probably putting in some error bars. So on the layout tool, we turn on some error bars. 
None of these are what we want. What we want are these things down here. So this is how we have to do it. You turn on error bars, I'll just pick one, standard deviation, okay? Standard error. They're wrong, but there they are. Then you select, let's say, the horizontals. You right click and you format those horizontal error bars. This pops up, you wanna customize, you wanna specify the value. In this little bit here, you want the first column. Then you have to do it for the negative, that column again. So we put it in, we hit OK, we hit close. Now those horizontals are so small, they're almost impossible to see, which is OK. We'll talk about that later. The vertical error bars, you select those, you right click, you format the vertical error bars, you customize, you specify value, this little thing pops up, you gotta drag down on those vertical ones you calculated, you gotta do it again on the bottom one. You hit OK, you hit Close, here we go. So, these little error bars, they're so tiny, the horizontals aren't even showing up. That's OK, sometimes that happens. The verticals are there, at least there. Alright? So now we have a graph with error bars. Some tiny, some large enough to just barely see. Then, just like last year, you select, right click, add a trend line, and you turn on your equation, and we got our line of best fit right there. That's our line of best fit, okay? Still, this is not enough to pass, though. Level three is a bit different. So here we go, back to our list. What comes next? Now that we have all this, we have to decide which error bars make a good error line. So what that means is we need a second line on this graph. We need a graph with two lines, not just one, but two. So you have a gander at all these lines, all these little error bars here, and you decide, well, maybe, remember the error bars are how good each dot is, and maybe this first dot, if we go to the upper left of this first dot, those possibilities, and the bottom right of this dot here, maybe that can go through about half. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we have eight dots, so we want to use at least half of our error bars to make an error line. So what that means, here I'll type it in, so, so your error line, we'll call it choice number one, is going to use your first four dots. First four dots. It's going to start at the upper left of first dot to the lower right of the fourth dot now how this we have to calculate these numbers so here it goes what we want here's our first dot right here this right here is our first dot on our graph so what we want is the to, uh, uh, so we want the the horizontal value number so that's going to equal 0 0.771 and we're going to subtract this 0 0.00 three, two, four, one. We could have just done this in a calculator, but since we're doing it slow ways, here it is. So that's the number, it's just a bit over there. And then we're also going to want to use our 1.53, and we're gonna to wanna to add our 0 0.15, oops, 0 0.15, don't drop that decimal place. And that gets us the upper left area of this little tiny window right here. Now the fourth dot, one, two, three, four. There's my fourth dot, okay? So I want to go to my lower right part. So I want to subtract, I want to do the 0 0.946 and I want to subtract how good that is. That's 0 0.002643, all right? Didn't really subtract because I never said equals. Let's try that again, there we go. And with my 1.83 since I want the lower now I want to subtract and I want to drop down 0 0.012 there we go okay so these two dots I want to put on my graph here's the trick you get your graph we'll pull it down a little bit so we can see everything 
and you select the dots. You right click and you want to select data. Now that's highlighting what we want. We actually want to add a new series. So we want to add a new set of data. So we'll call this error line. Error line one, let's say. For the X values, you click on this and you select the two ones you just calculated. For the Y values, you select on this and you do the two ones you just calculated. You hit OK hit OK and it's made these two little red dots on our graph exactly where we calculated they should go. You select those red dots, right click, add a trend line, turn on the equation, linear, hit OK and there it is. So we can even call this the error line and you can even type back in here if you really wanted to you could type in line of best fit. Alrighty, so there we go. We have our error line. Now we have a graph that's worthy of passing level three physics. And this error line, as you can see, is going through all four sets of error bars. It's not really worrying about these other four, but the, the placement of these is quite tricky. Okay, so back to the list. We've made our lines, we've calculated the two points to put on the equation. Ah, here we go. This is what we need to do. That Y and that X, and that Y and that X, you cannot leave. You must remember that the vertical axis of this graph is T. The horizontal on this graph is the square root of L. Which translates like that, since you can't do superscript. So down here, that's a T. And that's a square root of L. Now one thing to be wary of, the instant you type in this, if you want to change any of the data, if you want to pull out an outlier, if you want to recalculate stuff and the dots move around, the equations will no longer automatically change. Once you pull out that y and x, you might have to turn the equation off and turn it back on again if you had to recalculate anything. You learn that the hard way. So this is now ready for us to write a conclusion. You can make it look pretty if you really want to. Here's how to make it look pretty. You don't need any of this. You can delete that. You can go back to layout. You can go back to the grid lines and you can turn on your minor grid lines on both sets of axes so it looks more like a graph you're used to using. You go over to print and it'll be printing like this. It'll take up a whole page which is what you want. All right, we've got our two lines. We've got an error line, which is not as steep. We've got the line of best fit. Our line of best fit is 1.8972. Remember what we expected. We expected two. So that's, that's pretty close. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. So we're getting 1.9er, and we expected two. All right, now from here on out, it's how to do the conclusion. That could go up to merit or it could be just achieved. That's probably another video, but this will get you there, okay?